Hello, friends, family, and my followers. This is Hike360, and I'm here to give you a new hike this week. Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo! Good morning. We are at Fullersburg Woods Forest Preserve, and this is the uh, visitor center, which is closed right now for COVID. Unfortunately, I understand there's a woolly mammoth in here. All right, I'll turn you around. The Salt River, which I guess is the focal point of this hike. We're going to be going, well, we're going to go north first. Is that north? Anyway, we're going that way. We're going to be around and we'll come back up this way. Okay, we have commenced our hike at Fullersburg Woods. Uh, we're passing our first uh, big part of this hike, and that is the North Island Loop Trail, or small, small to be called its own trail. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna take you over the bridge and show you what the little island looks like at Fullersburg Woods. <laughs> we are all, we are both having a hard time with that. Fullersburg Woods. You tell them how there's lots of people here? A lot of people here. There's a lot of people here. Nature's best dam builders. I've it's seen a lot, a lot of downed of, trees in the last beavers. Yeah? couple of days, yeah. Forget where it was yesterday. I wonder if beavers hibernate. I would guess not. Uh, all right, so we, we are off the island. In fact, you can still kind of see the island over here. We're back on the main path. We have seen a lot of people, and I wanted to uh, start the video and actually comment. We just saw a guy that must have been 90 and another guy that was late 70s, certainly. Um, we're also passing some bathrooms, and it's the second set of bathrooms that we've had so far on this trip. And uh, so my comment is, this is a really nice short there's a lot of bailouts for all ages kind of all times of year like i say it's pretty well kept there are bathrooms and facilities available i think that really makes a difference for a lot of people uh to be able to know that feel comfortable to come out for a hike that they can you know choose the duration and know that they're needs are taken care of yeah they're really here to support you to get through this hike here's another white-haired person coming along the trail and uh, yeah like I said I think they're really doing their best to support your needs to get through this this trail so, that's cool I respect that yeah all right we're going back in right going back, back to in. It. part two <laughs> all right uh, I'm, I'm not going to get political, so please take the political aspect of this conversation out, but we just talked about bathrooms and I've been thinking this week, uh, we are middle of March, well I guess it's the 24th or something like that, Yep. Um, and in the news this week is Biden administration talking about a, a new infrastructure bill. and. Boy, I tell you, I get really tired of these infrastructure bills because almost all the money goes to roads, which uh, everybody likes roads, but we, we really shouldn't in the sense that we spend an amazing amount of taxpayer dollars on roads and mm -hmm. we call it infrastructure. And yes, there's absolutely a, a, a economic correlation, but um, what we also have witnessed in the last couple of months is Texas's electric grid, you know, completely failing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. its residents. Uh, locally, our power has gone out twice in the last two weeks. In tree, Illinois? You know, well, no, actually in, in grandma's house. Okay. Uh, tree trimmer knocked a wire down, that's to be expected. Put it back up, but when they put the wire back together, you know, a couple of days later, four transformers in a row all all overheated and exploded we you know the good news is we get new transformers but the 
the reveal there is, you know, ComEd is no different from Pacific Energy in California causing fires and Texas, they have policies where they don't upgrade the infrastructure despite the consumer board that's here to help the consumers and make sure that we're supported. You know, the policies around that infrastructure of electricity are not good. They're not sustainable. So you're not saying that instead of roads, we should be putting it in electricity. I'm saying, yeah, we should put it into electricity. Uh -oh. And I can't tell you how many times this week I've had bad cell connection and I've had bad Comcast internet connection like to me electricity and the internet are more important than roads but if we're going to go out and talk about infrastructure let's put in things that don't demand cars like better public trans bathrooms so that's what got us onto this topic I would love to see public bathrooms like everywhere as a hiker whether I'm in the city or not I'm walking all the time and you know when I'm on a mountain no problem there's no problem going to the bathroom on a mountain but when you're urban mm -hmm. when you're in an environment like this it's not okay to just hit the nearest tree and uh, and if you're downtown like you know we're the distance you hear the roads that's 31st Street well remember we just did a hike in December down to 31st Street Harbor on the, on the lakeshore okay. All right and that was a really long hike yeah it was with like zero two, bathrooms it's like 15 miles and yeah that's a very good point yeah. there was you know we passed through some major parts of the city like there were bathrooms at the bean but they were locked Right, yeah, all the bathrooms COVID. get closed because of the pandemic. Like, yeah. it's the worst freaking idea. Yeah, I, don't, I agree. That causes a lot of problems. And then 31st Street Harbor probably had a bathroom, but... Also closed. But, you know, there's 15 miles we walked through, and those were the two. So. Yeah, so obviously we had to hit an air's tree, but, you know, it's hard to do when you're on Lakeshore Drive or along the beach. So... So, so my you know, point is, roads are great, and we spend a shit ton of money on roads. Language, but maybe we, we ought to spend some money on things that support the the newer lifestyle, the lifestyle that is not going to the office six days, five days a week, six days a week. Nice slip, five days a week. Um, you know, where the commute is not what it used to be, um, and let's put some of that. Otherwise, infrastructure money. I heard somebody say, oh, well, the last time we had a major road infrastructure policy was in the 50s with the Eisenhower Expressway. It's like, dude, every time there's a recession, infrastructure gets funded and it's all about roads. And we just did it in 2008. We spent like, a, you know, $800 billion or something like that. And most of the, most of the road was simply asphalting there was really no infrastructure it was repair very different concepts sure we can spend a lot of money i'm sure there's a lot of people that are supported by those dollars for their jobs that don't like me talking about this but just as many people can be supported by building public trans and and other support items for biking walking uh, and other means of transit that don't involve a car all right that's what i had to say solid all right what what kind of infrastructure would you guys like to see more of oh good question good question comment below comment below he's got another topic <laughs> uh so we're at an intersection of multiple paths behind us here signs and posts and uh, uh, I just I'm thinking how nice this is really a great hike yeah and uh, really well kept so compare this to Pritcher Pilcher Park Pilcher Park where the park that was had 11 different colored trails all of them in pastel shades <laughs> Yeah, I remember uh, without arrows. So they had posts like that. Yeah, the post didn't have the arrows telling you which direction. I mean, this is so much easier 
and at no point in time do I feel like I'm lost. Yet it's still just as windy and and hilly and it's just as many road you know paths. And with the feeling of not having to worry about getting lost comes for me uh, the relaxation of the mind and it's really valuable for me to have a relaxed mind in nature that's when so much so many creative good ideas uh, are able to come to me and and my mind's able to work things out and I get into sort of a flow state uh, so not having to worry about where we're going within reason within reason you got to pick your head up every now and then for sure yeah that's important for me and what great homes man this would be fantastic to be part of this I don't know if we've ever done a baton toss. Yeah, hey, hey. All right, I'll spin around for everybody. Can't tell which camera is on. <laughs> hey, Ryan, what is the current American dream? I would think is to experience as much as possible and that the idea of going to college, working a nine to five and having a family is not as picture perfect as we were fed to believe growing up through elementary school and pre-high school. Well, Travel. Well said. Figuring out a way to make money that Again, doesn't require you to be in a physical location for eight hours every day or whatever it is. Uh, to, to be able to work remotely and, and travel and see as much as possible and experience as much as possible. I think you summarized the millennial um, lifestyle, which for some reason people don't really understand. I'm not really sure why it's been so hard for people to understand that quality of life and experience is the primary goal yeah um, uh, opposed to and that's not the answer to the question I was looking for but I'll, I'll get to that in a sec but okay we'll try know, the, again the, the previous look the, we're coming in my so on my train of thought of the American dream the previous American dream is home ownership and we're passing all these you know great Na Naperville homes that are you know perfect proof of the idea of what a great home ownership can be all right then my answer to the, what my american dream is is happiness and good health health is the answer i was looking for i think the new american dream that we're moving into and if you go back to the you know to the beginnings of time right obviously the american dream um through the revolutionary war was freedom yeah uh then yeah, we, that's important then we got into you know land ownership i think for you know a while uh safety i think was for a while but i don't know if that's really an american dream safety but uh we definitely have been in i think education has had a generation or three worth of american dream home ownership has been the one that we're coming off of in my opinion and we're moving on to health and life experience quality of life those are all health parameters so i'm going to wing this back to that infrastructure conversation. So one of the you know, one of the things that businesses I'm trying to get going uh, with, you know, some people are fiber optics within retirement homes. Um, and really, there's a a focus on e-health. That when we talk about infrastructure and you you build roads instead of electricity and internet then you forego the whole e-health concept. In fact, you forego the whole health concept. Uh, you definitely forego the idea that you could work from home. You can't work from home if you don't have electricity and internet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, our small power outages that happened at grandma's house you know, in the last two weeks, if Debbie were still alive, these would be serious. I mean, they were only a couple of hours long, but 
they would be really serious, especially if they happened in the middle of the night. She was on dialysis. Right. This is e-health. The alternative is she's in a hospital where there is no quality of life and her life expectation drops. But being able to have dialysis at home through the night, which is just an amazing invention, uh, depends on electricity. Right. You can't have it go out in the middle of the night. Right. That's a that's an, a trip to the hospital's consequence. And think of all the other people. I mean, if we'd gotten her, many people are on blood sugar monitors that are tied to the internet. You've got uh, blood pressure, heart rate, uh, all kinds of different monitors that are tied to the internet. They need electricity. They need power, or they need access. You can't you can't do an e-health concept without. With the current infrastructure, in my, my opinion, the current infrastructure is just not there for that sort of thing. All right, I'm done for that. Let's talk about the well, dam. We should do a new video for this. Yeah. And wait. Okay. Also, a part of living remotely for me, like my goal of living remotely, is still to be connected. Electricity still plays a very important part in the idea of traveling and seeing as much as possible, whatever. I still want to be connected even if I'm alone in the world. Just wanted to add that to it. All right. All right. Yeah. What are we looking at? Well, we're still just a part of the Fuller, uh, Fullersburg Woods Forest Preserve, but across the street, or across the bridge, across the bridge, is uh, the Grau Mill and Museum. And it's a historical landmark of a guy who owned a grain mill in 1856 uh, up until like 1926. And uh, so they did, uh, you know, they had grain there, making grains, milling grains. But also, uh, this was a stop on the Underground Railroad. And uh, so this was a safe haven as much as it could be uh, for escaped slaves and slaves working towards running towards their freedom uh, as far north as they could get and into Canada. So lots of history right here. You can see the, well, I don't know if it shows up, but the water wheel for the, the mill is right over here on the, obviously this side of the building because the water would have been redirected over there. I guess still kind of is. It smells really cool too. I, I thank you for saying that. I was just going to bring that up. The smell, this water is, is being activated so nicely. The smell is just gorgeous. quick little video I'm taking my lunch break and I've got some sunflower butter of course and orange jelly uh, the grocery store that I like to go to Jerry's fruit market in Niles Illinois they were having a $1 per jar of jelly jam uh, sale so I picked up three and the orange jelly was one of them so that's what I'm having for lunch other than that I finished the valley trail and uh, yeah this hike is coming to a close sitting in an anthill. <laughs>